Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be going over how you can make 100 to 500 to 1,000. Hey, the sky's the limit, whatever. Let's make some money on Amazon. All right, guys, welcome back. Thanks for sticking through the intro. So today I wanted to go over actually the reason that people buy your product. This is something that gets overlooked. Psychometrics, target audience are often not talked about within Amazon sellers. I think it's something that should be brought to the table and discussed. So let's just jump right into it. Um, indoor Herb Garden Starter Kit. This is my browsing history. No, 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 hang on a second. Let's go back to the browsing history. If anyone wants to donate an espresso machine, I've been looking, they range from $100 to $500. I can't get myself to pull the plug on one, but there's something about an iced latte that really helps my workflow. <laughs> so we're gonna jump into um, this kit right here specifically is something where someone has done exactly what I'm talking about. Now they, they know how to make a listing. Let me explain to you why this why this is working so well. Now, if you had to guess how much you think this is making, this is a pretty competitive market. They're actually doing $15,000 a month in revenue. So let's say even if they have a 50% margin, um, which they, they probably do at this price range, let's say 40 to 50%, they're easily making $250 a day selling this product. So that's amazing. That falls right in between, that's literally, you know, right in between 100 to $500 a day. So. Why are they winning when so many are else so many others are failing? So for one thing, they definitely invested in their packaging, they invested in their branding, they invested it in their image. Target audience is going to be very receptive to this listing. It's the box is made out of wood. I've never seen packaging that nice. And that's a really really good pack packaging. It's literally made out of a wood box. It's probably a little bit extra, but they went the extra mile and that's why they're being rewarded. They only have 105 reviews, so it's not like they're winning because they have a thousand reviews or anything. It's a pretty competitive market and they're doing really well. So they come with these little burlap sacks. Now, if we really think about it, it's not like what they did is unheard of and it's not like what they did is really gonna cost them that much. The wood box is obviously gonna be more than cardboard. Say that's probably whatever. If that's $2 or $3, that's a lot of their cost just in that. And then the herbs and the burlap and the wood tags are gonna be essentially nothing. Scissors will be close to nothing. It's the, really their packaging that they're paying for, I'd imagine. Um, now let's just go analyze the market as a whole and figure out why is this one winning? So hang hang with me if you're if you're feeling a little bit lost right now, um, we're getting into kind of psycho psychometrics and why people do what they do. So stray away from thinking about Amazon as what's the best idea because I can go find you an idea right now. I could go find you a fifteen thousand dollar a month product that doesn't have a lot of reviews. It's not the idea that matters. I want to retrain your brain. Okay, so I'm reading a book right now, The Making of the Atomic Bomb. Uh, won the Pulitzer Prize. So Einstein and Slizzard had to think differently. They had to change their perception of the problem they were going towards. They had to really get outside of themselves and think differently to achieve what they achieved and change the world in the way that they did. Um, could have gone a lot differently, but thanks to people that were willing to step outside of the common view, think about a situation differently and apply, you know, maybe things they hadn't even heard of yet. And, you know, that's part of thinking outside of the box is being able to not just accept that things are the way they are, but how can we make them the way they want to be? And that's what I think about with Amazon going forward. Um, towards the end of this year, I really want you guys focusing on how can you excel in the market? How can you be the best in the market? So right off the bat, they're right up top on the first page and I'm, I just fell in love with this packaging. So I actually found this months ago and I literally thought about coming back to it just to look at it for ideas because I remembered it. That's what an impact it made on me. I literally remembered the keyword and who the seller was and what the first picture was because that's how powerful I've never seen a first picture that drew me in like that, just rustic. It's you know got that boho thing going on, the farmhouse thing, the branding's really good. I love the logo, just everything flows very well. And we come down, meanwhile, you know, there's people trying to, um, so that's the same seller again. So they're doing an herbal tea garden. That's really smart. So they're branching out now. So they thought differently and now they're able to 
you know, apply and that's a brand new listing. So there, you know, how, how much is that doing? I bet you it's not doing too bad, even though it only has one review. Let's see. I don't know. Yeah. 3000. So it's not bad. And it's just starting. They probably just launched that. Um, so that's the power of branding too. Now you could actually take what you've done and, you know, apply elsewhere. Now this is essentially the same thing, right? Well, that's herbal tea, but we're going for more like this. So that first picture doesn't do as much. It's just the plants. We don't really see what we're buying. What sticks out here, and you know, that's kind of the typical first picture. Everyone's essentially selling the same thing, but it's the way that they're presenting it that's differently. Think differently when you're going into markets. Think how, you know, how who's gonna look at my image? What, you know, what constructs are they operating by? So these are obviously going to be gardeners. They're going to be people that are probably um, maybe into sustainability, eco-friendly, um, growing your own food, farming. What are what's the concept that I could show that person that will make them receptible to buying mine instead of the competitors? For one thing, this listing doesn't have any plastic in it. It's wood and it's burlap and it's you know the little dirt starters and it's the seeds and the packaging is paper. Um, over here. We have, you know, a lot of plastic, some of the, you know, this isn't the most relevant search term. Everything's a little bit different, um, but that's something, you know, that's why they have the top of the page and very few do. And the people who do have very similar ideas to this organic home garden. They went with more of a visually appealing box instead of just kind of the wooden box. They have an image on theirs, but you know, this, this can be done in any market. You could analyze any market like this. Um, all you have to do is think about what's being done now and what's the issue. So there's not much more to do in this market, I don't think. Um, there's not too many issues, really. So I love to find markets. It's not the idea. Again, I want to get you out of the idea of thinking of what's the idea. And uh, you know what? I was going to save this idea for myself, but I think for the for the good of the audience, I'm going to show you this. I actually went over this on a, a mentoring call today with one of my students and showed them this. Um, so you guys are getting good information here. This is behind the scenes stuff that I'm looking at selling. So here's a, here's a product that I found recently. Um, now this is the shower foot scrubber and I'm probably sacrificing this idea by showing you this, but this is something I've been working on. So I'm not working on, but I just found it. Again, the idea is really good. So if we pull up Jungle Scout, I really could care less about the reviews. Um, there's still people crushing it with 34 reviews. There's people killing it with 83 reviews with, you know, 100, 114 doing 15,000 reviews don't mean much. It's just more like, you know, here we go, 34 doing, you know, oh, that's the same one. Okay, duh. The reviews don't make much, uh, make much uh, of a fuss to me. So like what I'm looking for is just that there's a lot of revenue spread out over the first page and there's an issue. So there's a crucial issue with this product. A lot of these sellers have three, look at three and a half stars, which is very, very poor. I think four and four to five is where most customers buy. Um, rarely see someone buy with three, and that's amazing that this person is able to sell nine thousand dollars a month in revenue with only thirty-four reviews, and it's only three stars. So what did they do? Well, they differentiated in the sense that they have this top part that actually washes the top of your feet. So essentially, if you don't understand the way this works, you suction it to the floor of the shower, and then you're gonna, you know, scrub your feet through there. So. I don't have to explain it too much, but what the typical product is, is it's these, right? So these go down, you just kind of scrub the bottom of your feet with them. This one's silicone. This one's more of like that bristle style you'd see in a, a floor brush. Um, and then this one is a differentiation that we just saw come into the market not too long ago. Not too many people have caught onto this. Um, there's actually, um, there's probably about 10 of them. No one's changed it though. All the designs are actually uh, not doing well. So this is one of the new ones. This has one review and look at, I think they're doing uh, like 5,000 or something. 7,000 in uh, revenue just because they put two together. So this is a very new product for the most part, that design at least. So now what are the issues? Well, why don't we go over that? Because what is our, you know, how are we gonna come in? How are we gonna innovate? How are we gonna apply the principle of being the best? Um, we'll, we'll spare him the, <laughs> the sponsored ad payment. We'll click on to his, um, I was looking for that. It doesn't really matter though. We could click on any of them. They're all the same. It's all the same listing from Alibaba. People are just putting it on Amazon. And that's what we're trying to get away from as we go forward. Spending time on differentiations, innovating. Um, so look at this, 36% of people gave it a one star review. That's horrible. Almost 40. 
is out of 10 people that buy it, four of them are going to throw it in the trash. I think they're just too soft. They flatten immediately. They're talking about the bristles. Um, after very little use, bristles fold over, making it useless. Poor quality bristles. Guys, what do you think we should fix? Hmm. I'm going to say the bristles. Do you agree with me on that one? Um, that this product is a waste of money. <laughs> useless terrible product so people hate that it doesn't stay on the shower floor so the suction cups are not good and the bristles are very bad but people are still buying it so no one's fixed it if, the, if you ever see a little this is a telltale sign that you should get into a market if you could fix it you ever see people buying it even though there's still a ton of people complaining about the product that's an awesome time to enter the market and fix it because customers are not stupid most of them them at least you could come in you could change the concept of the product and if they see that it's been fixed, it's been changed, they're going to read the other customer reviews and say, hey, that one clearly fixed the issue. So let me, I'm going to actually give you my exact differentiation that I was working on for this product. So here we go. So, well, let's, let's go over why the suction cups aren't working. So there's only about six of them. And they're, they're these very cheap looking ones. And the people were saying they actually come out. So it's like, those are just suction cups, like with a divot and they go through those holes. Now let's show you the design that's working really well. So this listing right here is doing really good. Let me see, I don't remember exactly how much they're doing. Um, so this is just the, the typical one, right? So yeah, 8,000, so it's nothing crazy. Um, they're probably doing $150 a day in profit or so. Um, but okay, that's what I was showing you. I was gonna show you, look at the suction cups on these. So these are actually built into the product and there's like 50 of them. So this this one actually has really good reviews. They have 400 reviews and it's four star. So out of you know, out of 400 reviews, that's really good. And this one had no complaints of the bristles sliding around. So it suctions down and it actually stays there. So we need a... Uh... All right, um, I don't feel like cutting that out. Um, it adds character to the video. We need a higher density of these suction cups and we actually need them to be a higher quality. So this is made out of silicone. This whole thing is a silicone foot massager. Now, what if we did a combination of both? That would stand out greatly in the market and we would actually own the idea. Um, so we could even go as far as to patent our new design, right? So that would you know, kind of be next level, but if this really started taking off, it's something you'd wanna do, then any seller that tries to copy you, you dominate the market because no one can do it. So we could do this car wash style foot massage or foot cleaner, right? Where it has kind of the top and you slide your, you know, you guys know how you could picture how that works. What if we combine these two? So what if we have an all silicone sandal with silicone bristles? So now we've fixed the bristle issue. So we could cut this out in the size of a foot and we've now fixed the silicone issue, or I mean, we've, excuse me, we fixed the, um, the flattening of the bristles issue because silicone, it's not gonna flatten, right? It's always gonna hold this shape. It's not gonna get worn down. It's not like a bunch of independent members coming together, just one tall piece of silicone. And then we could actually, if we go and molded this with a supply now, this is gonna be a little bit more expensive, but we're talking about long-term here. So I'd rather, I'm reading a book called uh, The One Thing by Gary Keller right now. And he says, what's the most important thing you should be doing? Focus on that even at the detriment of other aspects of the business. So figure out what is the one domino you could push that'll knock everything else into place. Nah. Uh, that's essentially what you could do. Focus, you know, give up all the cheap little products that, yeah, maybe you could make $50 a day on. Maybe you could try and bundle it and get it ranked. What if we make a serious fix to a market that has the potential of scaling up to 50,000 a month and then bring that to the customer base with a fantastic first picture, like something like that as a first picture instead of just the product and have it be fixed. So make the silicone style version of this with those suction cups, it's basically gonna be this cut out. And then on the top, they're just gonna um, attach a small band like this, and that'll be silicone too. I have a small silicone arch just like that, and it'll have silicone ones coming downward as well. So now we've fixed all the issues. A lot of people were saying these were rough too. So the silicone was much softer, much more comfortable. These were a little bit rough and they flattened out very quickly. Um, so we could, you know, we could even keep that design with kind of like the callus file at the back there for your heel. We could implement that, that into there somewhere. There's just so many ways we could go with this and now no one's gonna go to that length, right? So if we went to Alibaba and we did, you know, you'll see this exact product. Here's a slight differentiation. Okay, there's the one that's doing 50K a month. 
um, slight differentiation. I haven't really seen that. And then we'll we'll get to it. I mean, it's it's down here a little ways. So um, we'll see it. So there's there's the cheap one that everyone was buying. Still, it's a dollar. We were complaining it wasn't working. Um, and then we have the uh, silicone mats in here as well. So right there, that's the exact product. So I'd be contacting this company, be contacting this company, be contacting this guy, anyone who's selling the general idea of the product, asking them if they can make these differentiate. Just say, if, if you can't make it, we'll just, we'll work with someone else. But we need these things fixed. I'm not gonna order it unless these are fixed. Come at it with the attitude of you're not gonna accept it any other way. You know, Elon Musk says you get paid in proportion to the size, the direct proportion to the size of the problem that you solve. You come into this market that's big, you know, with the ability to go up to $50,000 a month in revenue, you could be making 20K a month profit from one product potentially um, with no competition because they can't figure out how to redesign your product and especially if you patented it. Go into a market that size and fix the major issue that every cut, you know, four out of every 10 customers are complaining about. And actually more than that, that was just one star. That doesn't include the two and three stars. We'll say seven out of 10 probably are complaining about you fix that. You're going to get 70% of all those people that come to that market. And now that's a very inflated number. It could be, you know, different than that, but you're going to get a significant increase of sales compared to the person who just orders this and lists it on Amazon at a cheap price. So not only do you get to list and have that differentiation that no one can come in and compete with, you get to command the price, right? So if you could take anything away from this video, guys, we are going to wrap it up. Don't be another me too entrepreneur. We are not an Amazon business. We are a business that collects payments on Amazon. Treat your product with, you know, respect, bring a, a great deal of uh, innovation to the table when you're designing your product. Make sure, you know, you're actually delivering a quality product. You know, this is, you're representing yourself and your company with your product. Somewhere along the line, people got the idea that it was okay to just sell cheap products. I'm moving as far away from that as possible. I want to go back to something where I'm proud of my brand. We actually do bring the best quality products. If you can't pitch me your product, it's not a good product. So imagine, you know, I always do this test. Imagine you have to sell this product in person. Would you be embarrassed to knock on someone's door with their cheap product? Or would you say, hey, we fixed every issue with this product. It's in concept very good, but now it's actually practically and logically good. Everything that was broken about our competitors, we came in and fixed, and now we own that idea. So we're the only one you could buy it from. That's all that I got for you guys today. Hopefully you can take this away. I'm doing a small family vacation this week. Uh, I've been digging deep in a lot of material. I've been investing, uh, we'll just say a lot of money actually in some uh, higher level programs that I'm going through right now. I'm learning a lot. I think the best investment I've ever made in my life is some of the more expensive programs I've gone through. You know, everyone out there, you know, you're watching this. That means you're exactly like I am willing to spend, you know, you, maybe you're not investing with your dollar right now, but you're investing with your time watching me teach you a business model. Um, so that shows me that you're just like me. It wasn't too long ago that I was on the other side of this camera looking up videos just like this one. So stay with it, guys. Make sure you, you know, stay passionate. Don't let anyone distract you. Don't let anyone tell you this isn't going to work. You know, keep pursuing what everyone out there looks at investing in a business like this, investing in the next program as a cost. Well, they, yeah, they don't even think of it as investing. They think of it as, uh, you know, spending their money on a program or uh, maybe some products to sell, that's a cost to them. But to us, it's an investment. Okay, we know that's gonna be worth more in the future. You know, I've spent $1,000 on a um, sales and persuasion course before, um, just very recently this past week, and I'm not even, it's 70 hours of content, probably 20% of the way through it, but it's one of the best returns on investment I'll ever get in my life because what I'm learning there is invaluable between writing copy, doing online sales, and uh, actually being able to get people to invest in my ideas, invest in myself. So guys, I hope you are just as motivated as I am. I can't wait to keep bringing you awesome information. You guys are sticking around enjoying the content. Subscribe if you're new here, I'd love to have you. Other than that, don't forget to like the video. As always, I'll see you in the next one.